Hi, my name is Kent Mitter, and this is a presentation uh, introducing the topic of service-oriented architecture. I'll be looking at where it fits in with the emerging web, uh, some of the common practices to implement an SOA, and then what can go wrong. Here are three working definitions for terms I'll use later to discuss the emerging web. Service-oriented architecture, or SOA, the semantic web, and cloud computing. SOA is an approach to distributed software architecture. It employs communication between loosely coupled services. It utilizes standard interfaces and protocols to cross-platform. Tim Berners-Lee defines the semantic web as a web of data that can be processed directly or indirectly by machines. The idea in the semantic web is to provide data with meaning, uh, to, to make the data context sensitive, to make the machine uh, aware of the context and the domain that the, da that the data is relevant to. The, the semantic web is often associated with the technologies that allow for the semantic web, including the Resource Description Framework, or RDF, RDF XML, RDF Schema, and the Web Ontology Language, or OWL. Cloud computing is Internet computing. It allows users and developers on-demand access to computing resources, including infrastructure, platforms, and services, without requiring the expertise, cost, and time to design, test, and maintain the resource. Cloud computing is a disruptive technology space. Top-tier companies are competing in this space. Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, Apple. Each of these companies have their own understanding of what cloud computing is, what direction it's going in, and what their, uh, their solution to the cloud is. Here's a nice slide from Dr. Chen's lectures in uh, service-oriented computing and information management. It shows the relationship of Web 1.0, service-oriented computing, the semantics web, and cloud computing. He views the, uh, the migration of service-oriented computing and semantics-based web away from Web.0 as two orthogonal developments. You're moving from static content to dynamic content and recompositions with a move towards service-oriented architectures. And you're moving from a uh, syntax-heavy web to a, a web of understanding, a web of context, a web of ontology and semantics, uh, data that, that can re properly represent itself within its domain. When you combine those two orthogonal developments, you move toward what we're getting with, with cloud computing, uh, ubiquitous computing, uh, your data, your information everywhere. Here's another nice slide presented by Dr. Chen that shows the migration of, of the emerging web and the business case that's driving the new technologies. As we move from the 80s into uh, 2000s, we see uh, a, a preeminence of service-oriented architecture, computing, and development, uh, the idea of loosely coupled services the idea of separation of concerns between the service provider, consumer, and the service broker. And as we move more uh, into the 2010s, we're seeing social networking and mashups starting to really drive innovations in the web. This slide shows Gartner Incorporated's uh, view of where we are in the hype cycle of the emerging technologies. And you can see that there will be an expectation spike before you get real productivity. Um, and this is from 2009. In their view, cloud computing was at the, at the peak of, of hype, at the peak of expectation, 
with little real uh, productivity value. On the other hand, service-oriented architecture by 2009, in their view, is becoming a mature technology where we're really getting productive gains. And you can see that it with uh, companies like Salesforce.com. Salesforce's big idea is uh, multi-tenant architecture. You have uh, one instance of an application and you can have that split over several servers. Any client can, can log in and they're really using the same core guts. So you, you get a tremendous savings in cost. The first instance that you build is, is expensive. The more clients you get, the more companies that are using uh, Salesforce to, as part of their business-to-business -business solution, the, the, more, uh, the cheaper it is to implement for you as a company. That's when you really get profit. The next two slides show how easy it is to implement service-oriented architectures um, and what the core concepts are. Here you have a separation of concerns. It's a three-party model that's divided between the application builder, the service broker, and the service provider. The service provider can, can think in terms of their low-level services. They can focus on those, on perfecting those on the, um, the rigorous testing and deployment. And they don't have to be concerned with uh, making their, uh, all they have to concern themselves with is publishing their application once it's, once it's ready for deployment. They don't have to be concerned with the application builder interface. The service broker is, is a way to not have to care about the application builder's concerns or the service provider. It's just the middleman. It allows a way for service providers to publish their services and application builders to look up and see which services are available. And the application builder can now focus on the workflows they care about. They can focus on their business case, why it is they're really building their application. They don't have to be concerned with the low-level details. They just use the service broker as a resource to discover which services are available, and then uh, contact the service provider through the published interface. I previously mentioned that every company has its own view of what cloud computing is and what their solution is. Well, it's very similar with service-oriented architectures. This shows IBM's enterprise service bus architecture. Very easy concept. You want to move legacy systems over to SOA, well, we'll give you this backbone you can use to communicate with. You just virtualize your individual instances of, of your legacy applications, hook it up to a service adapter, and then you're, you're good. Uh, you, you now have a, a fully operational service-oriented architecture. What could go wrong? Well, according to David Lithicum, uh, there's a lot that can go wrong. You can end up with something that's uh, completely unmaintainable. Just because you have uh, a, an enterprise service bus backbone doesn't mean that you can't end up with um, an, an unmaintainable um, frozen system where you can't make changes. Any change you make ripples across the system and breaks other, other components. In his presentation, Five Things to Avoid when, it, when Creating Your Own SOA, David Lithicom uh, points out five recurring problems, five, five anti-patterns, five, five things that you really need to pay attention to. You don't want to use the wrong people. You don't want to select the technology too early. You, you need to consider your service design. You can't just gloss over that. You need to factor in what the real business case is for implementing the SOA, and you need to think long-term and strategic, not short-term and tactical. David's full presentation is about 40 minutes long, but it's, it's uh, very entertaining and insightful. I recommend it. And on the uh, final slide, 
I'll uh, show you some of the references that um, I've, I've used to put this presentation together. Okay, that's, that's it for today, and I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.